my name is AC, and I head up the um, what we call the digital hub at PVH Europe, which is actually a merge of the IT teams and digital transformation teams. Uh, we sit in Amsterdam. And I'm going to go out with a huge disclaimer, because this is not a technological presentation. So if you're expecting architectural drawings and things like that, you will not see that from me. Um, yeah, we're in the business track, exactly. Um, but what I will focus on um, is the aspect of transformation that translates into the soft side of things and into the people. Um, and also talk to you about how techno technology has actually impacted our business in a very robust way. So when I put up a slide like this in a room like this, um, a lot of people are most likely going to think this. Um, especially if you think of the consumerization of technology and if you think of it, most likely the worlds that you guys live in, everything has to go fast and technology is everywhere. But when you talk about fashion, this isn't necessarily true. Um, the fashion industry is an old one. And the way that the business has been run in the, few, in, in the past was always a bit of well, first of all, very analog, but it's also always been done in like backroom deals and someone knows something and then we sell 100,000 polos and you know, it's, it's a bit old school. And that's not just the way we sell, it's the way we produce the clothing and, and actually also a little bit of the way how we engage with our consumer. Um, but where digital transformation for us started and especially in our industry um, and for PVH is in the B2B sphere. Um, our business is built on selling our products to department stores who then sell to consumers. And in order to sell to department stores, we actually have to create the product. We sell two brands, and each brand has about eight sub-brands. Every sub-brand has about 1,500 different pieces of clothing that we sell every quarter. Now, if you do that math, that's a lot of product to create just to sell to a department store, to then produce to sell to a consumer. So um, a while back, our CEO was walking through our showrooms um, and was thinking, you know what? This doesn't make sense. All these products, all this infrastructure, we have a showroom in every single country in Europe so all that real estate, all that space, all that product that we have to create just to sell, just to produce, to sell to a consumer, it's not making sense. How can we do this differently? How can we make sure that the process is more efficient um, and that we disrupt the way that we work? Because not only is it completely inefficient, because if you have one sample but you have two appointments, you literally have salespeople pulling on a polo shirt because they want to be able to sell it to their department store first. Um, but it's also a huge impact on our supply chain because to produce for those two brands every single quarter all those millions of garments, it's huge. And then have to ship it, uh, the logistics behind it, but also the impact on the world and the sustainability side of things. It's just, it really doesn't make sense. So he challenged us, and this is four years ago. He challenged the team where it was a small team, it was three people. Um, and he said, how can we do this differently? How can we disrupt um, the way we think? So we got to work, we sat in the showrooms for weeks at a time just looking at what the sales guys were doing. And they were building their assortments on the floor with the physical samples and the salesperson came and then they bought everything and they put it together, they went to lunch, they had to do it again and the new customer came, they had to do it again. Um, but we mapped it out and we presented them with a concept of a digital way of doing things. And to give you a bit of an idea of what the state um, was, emotional state of our sales guys, uh, it was them saying, you will never, ever take away my samples. I will never sell digitally. If you do this to me, I will leave the company. Um, this will never work. It will never fly. All our customers will leave us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Doom and gloom forever. Um, but. We kept on going, so we put something in front of them, um, and we said, hey, but what about this? And maybe from the 25 people that we spoke to, there were one or two that said, maybe.
maybe. So we took those guys and we said, well, what if we change it this way? And what if we change it that way? And what if we build this? And without even knowing what agile software development was and before it even was a buzzword, we actually started to do this iterative way of working ourselves. Uh, just because we knew that what we were creating was so far away from what they were used to doing that we just had to get them on board and develop just piece by piece, but super fast. And that's how we got to our first version of our digital showroom, which looks like this. And um, it actually looks quite similar to what you see right here, but what we have developed since, because that iter iterative approach has not stopped. Um, what we've developed since has been a major breakthrough um, for everything that we do. Um, and not just from the people perspective, also obviously from a technology perspective. And right now, um, we are at 80% digital capacity in Europe, which means that 80% of all our showrooms have sh digital showroom capacities and the, they barely need samples anymore. And I'm going to show you the video just once more because I love it. Um, I know that you've seen it, but repetition does not spoil the prayer. Um, the video that you're seeing is actually at our offices in Amsterdam. Those are our headquarters. And the people in the video, the guy's an actor, because he's also a bit, he's really good looking. Um, but the woman is actually someone who's part of the digital showroom team. So this video is not makeup, this is real, and it's actually in our showrooms. And that's just one example, one showroom. Actually, the way that, what you see in that video, that's our now 80% of our showrooms, what they look like. And when we opened up our new offices in Amsterdam, and this was in 2016, so we had been working for two years already on the digital showroom, we opened two floors of digital showrooms and overnight our sales guys had to sell digitally. And that was a big change, but it was also for us a breakthrough because they were able to do it. So without any further ado, I'm gonna show you the video once more just to give you the flavor and then we're gonna continue. Another day, another opportunity filled with possibility and potential. We're embracing innovation as we enter a new era, revolutionizing the fashion industry and looking to the future. We're pioneering innovative new technologies that allow us to work smarter, better, and faster. In 2015, we revolutionized the buying and selling journey for our wholesale customers with the industry's first ever digital showroom. What started as a vision for the future became a reality. Today, we have digital showrooms in 13 countries with 24 theaters and 59 workstations. By the end of 2017, we'll have 26 theaters and 78 workstations, from Europe to the Americas to Asia and everywhere in between. But we won't stop there. By advancing the technology, we've taken our digital showroom even further, constantly evolving to meet our customers' needs. We're immersing our customers into our world from the moment they arrive, creating an exclusive bespoke service. We're sharing our brand heritage and our seasonal inspirations so our customers understand the collections better than ever. And we're making it easier for them to take control. In just one click, everything is displayed on ultra high definition 4K screens, from product details and pricing to buying history, delivery dates and more. We're bringing greater ease to creating, editing, strengthening, and perfecting unique assortments for every customer. With the selection process complete and no additional paperwork or admin needed, a summary is sent directly to the customer's personal account. It's that simple. By reimagining the physical buying experience in the digital world, we've cut our sample production by 80% at our European headquarters. And we're doing the same for our digital showroom locations globally. Improving our sustainability and optimizing our efficiency, all without ever losing the personal touch. As for tomorrow, whatever it brings, we'll be ready. We're adapting our business to meet the changing needs of the industry. Innovating, pioneering, and evolving our vision for the future. We'll see you there. So, um, the moment that we opened this, um, that was a really exciting time for us, because as I said, overnight, the guys had to sell digitally. And so if you remember the first images I showed with all those rows and rows and rows of product, this is what our showrooms look like right now. And that's the only product that we have on the floor, because our guys and ladies are now selling fully digital. 
And it has made such an impact, not just in terms of reputation, um, in terms of you know, how we're perceived in the industry, it has made concrete impact in our time to market. We've been able to reduce our sell-in time by six weeks. Uh, for those who might be in fashion, that is unheard of in the industry. Um, we've been able to up our amount of appointments that we do per day. Our sales are much more accurate. Our customers are actually really happy. And we have people calling us, competitors, saying, can we buy your digital showrooms from you? Um, it's a real big achievement. We're rolling them out also now in CK. Um, but it hasn't been easy. Um, Change is really hard. And it's not just hard because you need advanced technology. It's hard because change for human beings is something that goes against you. And especially for sales teams who have to work in such completely different ways, it's hard. So if you think of the change curve and the emotions that people go through, well, I can assure you that in practice, we have gone through all of this with our guys. Um, denial, absolutely. We had people just walk, just ignore that we were there and just think, you know, I put my hand in the sand and it will go away magically. Um, we've had people very frustrated. We've even had definitely people depressed. Um, but as you involve people and as you show them that this can actually work, the light at the end of the tunnel starts to come. We had one of our bigger customers, a Spanish department store, who um, three years ago said, please do not ever bring me into this digital thing again. I do not want this, it doesn't make sense to me. And then just two quarters ago, I saw him in the digital showroom and I swear he was dancing. And he was dancing because he had just placed an order in 10 minutes that would otherwise take him two days because for their department store, they buy so many options, they can't even fit it on a physical floor. So now he was able to do this in 10 minutes just because of the way that it worked. And actually the tool hasn't just changed that much, but the way that our sales teams were using it and the value that they saw in it also convinced him that he could do it. But what has been our mantra in all of this? Um, when we go through transformation like this, we tend to try to keep a balance. That 50% is about the right tools, and you actually need to create products that add value, and you need to keep your end user in mind always. But the other 50% of the effort and the time that you spent should be put on the people. Because when you do radical innovation um, and change like this, if you forget about the people aspects, the adoption is never going to happen. And the adoption is what you need in order to then again advance your product. So this mantra has always been a guiding um, force for us to be able to never forget the two. It even accounts for our internal teams because radical change also in terms of technology means that people who have worked maybe in IT teams um, that aren't as advanced also have to get used to this and have to get used to these new ways of working. So again, the focus on the people is super, super important. Um, and the digital showroom has been a catalyst for us because once we saw the potential that digital can bring on such a sphere that we thought was kind of the way that fashion works for wholesale sales, we realized there's so much more that we can disrupt. And if we can leverage technology in such a way, we could go across our entire value chain. Um, so seeing how our sales teams changed, seeing how we're also starting to build different technology teams internally, we're now tackling not just uh, the digital showroom, but we're actually building out a digital selling ecosystem so that you can go from prepping your appointments all the way to processing your orders and doing reorders. But there's even more what we're doing because we're actually now going back to the source of our company. So if you think about fashion, product is really what's at the heart of it. And when you think about product creation, um, it's in this essence quite a cumbersome way of working. You have to design a product, you make a hand sketch, you send that hand sketch via email to a factory in China who will then interpret that, you hope, and send you back a prototype. 
And then you look at that prototype and you think, well, that's not really what I wanted. So then you pin it and you send it back again. And that goes back and forth until eventually, after three rounds, if you're lucky, most likely four, you actually get a product that you want. So again, this is a process that is just asking for disruption because it's so inefficient, it's so sequential. This just it cannot be that we're still continuing to work this way. And that's why we are now focusing really on 3D design. And we're taking the learnings that we have from how we went into digital selling and we're approaching that to the design. So this is actually some of the 3D designs that our team made. Um, I, for me, this looks like physical products, just shot. Um, but we're taking the same approach. We're taking that iterative, step-by-step -step learning um, getting designers on board and really showing them how this can change. And at the same time, we're actually leveraging the technology that we've built for Digital Showroom and leveraging that across into 3D design and having development teams now really working in that same kind of flow. Um, let me quickly show you what 3D design really is. With cutting edge 3D design, an idea becomes a pattern becomes a garment at the click of a mouse. We can alter designs, create variations, and add finishing touches, all without the need for physical samples. That means consumers get our products faster, and 3D designing becomes 3D selling in our state-of-the-art digital showrooms around the world. That's what 3D technology can do today. Imagine what we could do tomorrow. Um, so as you can see, we definitely imagine that this will change how, how we work because that whole iterative process of sending something and sending, getting it back and sending it, uh, that doesn't need to happen anymore because you can do everything in 3D right here and then send a manufacturable ready 3D garment to a factory to produce. So we're going from 3D sketching to actually 3D prototypes to now thinking how could we already get this in front of a consumer so that we can gauge interest at an earlier stage so that we can make better decisions when we actually go into production. But we're, we're doing more than that because we're, where we started now with digital selling, moved into the heart of the company with 3D, we're now actually tackling systematically all those different parts of our value chain. So not just B2C, so how we go about working with our consumer. We're actually now thinking of how do we disrupt our value chain? What if our business model doesn't exist anymore? What would that mean? What if we would become a software company? What would that mean for us? And actually, we've been going into this direction because um, the, the digital showroom, the fact the immense business value that it has had for us, our competitors in the fashion industry have not been able to replicate a tool like this. And there has been true interest in our product. So we've now actually started what we call a corporate startup, which sounds really cool, but in reality, we have built a dedicated tech team um, to actually build out the uh, digital selling ecosystem, not just for PVH, but actually to potentially commercialize it in the future. Um, so this is what, something that we're actually concretely doing right now. Um, we're also building a joint venture with a large manufacturing company to build out the products for 3D design that will enable design in 3D in a much easier and less cumbersome way. Again, for PVH first, but potentially with the idea to commercialize and um, have the entire industry benefit from it. Because we also believe um, that the more companies move, in, mostly in fashion, so the more that companies move into these kinds of ways of working, um, the more the industry will benefit and eventually the world will benefit, especially because fashion is such a wasteful, um, a wasteful practice. So we really do see that this is a future for us and even though everyone is saying we should become a software company, um, Slowly and very carefully, we are actually trying to become that already. Um, and without the help of our great technology partners, we obviously wouldn't be able to, to do that. Um, and that's it. So if there's any questions from your side, I would love to answer them. Cool. Thanks.
question for you. Sure. So you are a business leader. Yes. You work closely with your technology partners um, inside the organization as well as externally. Tell us a little bit about the journey of working with your IT team on the inside and how you come to select or how they came to select Couchbase to support you in this very exciting venture. Can yeah. you just share a little bit of your sure. experience? So what I'll share is a little bit of the philosophy around how what we think of tech teams. Um, there's, it's interesting, especially in fashion companies, there's a lot of old IT. Um, and they used to sit in the basement and no one knew that they were there. And when you moved offices, you almost forgot to kind of take them with you. Um, so uh, we, we, when we started this, we were actually struggling to find uh, partners in the organization to be able to work with. Uh, the good thing is there's always talent. Uh, and when you find talent, you need to enable them. And you also need to empower them. So what we did is we found a group of people that were so passionate about the potential of solving this major challenge for us that by themselves, they just wanted to have the best possible solution in order to do this. And to do this at a scale at which we operate at Tommy and uh, Calvin Europe. Um, so it was about having a combination of the right teams and the right fit and some external partners, but also internal people that were just so passionate and wanted to go. And the most important thing, what we always talk about, is people that were able to see the bigger picture. So that we're not just building a solution for a certain niche problem, but we're thinking, wow, if we definitely want to change this, we need this to scale, and we need this to become sustainable, and we need this to become something that we can actually build upon in the future. And it's really allowing those teams to operate in full autonomy and having them make those decisions themselves and, and getting that enthusiasm to have the best in class in terms of software. And that's really what we did. Um, and I know our guys, our, our architects is sitting right here in the front. They, they look at things that inspire them outside of our industry. So one of the things that we always look at is Formula One. You know, how they transfer Exciting. data in milliseconds and how they're able to do this. So how do we ensure that we push data from, of product data and images across all our showrooms in the world in milliseconds? How can we do that? And those kind of challenges, that's what we challenge our tech teams with. And that's what they then start thinking about. And that's how you then slowly but surely also change the mindsets. Inspiration is what seems to lead it. Absolutely. Thank you for being an inspiring Thank speaker you. for us today. And wonderful to have you on board. Thanks. Thank you. How good is that?